Welcome back to the Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. My name is Scott Cawthon. All right, food theory. <laughs> Welcome back to MatPat Theory, where we make our theories yeah, about MatPat. Theory. And why Can we... you beat Gordon Ramsay? Um, can beat Gordon Ramsay. Welcome to food theory. What is it? Does he have a conspiracy theory about burgers? About <laughs> food. All right, here's what we'll do. I'm not going to play the video because I don't want him to sue our asses, sue our asses for so roasting bad, him. Buddy. We're just gonna turn on the and English from captions, what I, from what I've and heard, I'll do my best to read. And re from the from video. what I've heard, he's a very sensitive dude when it comes to like internet criticism. Oh, and the yeah. thing is, Matt, Pat, I just want to say I do respect the work and the reputation oh, that yeah. you've created. None of us hate. You, like, yeah, no. From like from one theater nerd to another, I do respect like the reputation that you have created around what you've done and the money you've made and the you have a you have a beautiful wife, dude. Like. Like yeah. I, you, you have a great she life going like, for you. Uh, if you are listening, Matt Pat, uh, she looks like the girl in um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jordan Peele's first big hit. Get out! Oh, yeah, get she out! She looks exactly like. The I've not seen Get Out. Oh, you haven't well, seen Get Out? No. I, I mean, not villain. Uh, the. Uh, yeah. No, but anyway, yeah, just no, I, 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 I do, I, I do, I do respect, I respect the life that you have, dude, like, you, you've made it, you're yeah. a huge sensation on YouTube, and I, more power to you. And if you want some tips on how to become oh, a better God, channel, no. talk to us, because I have a lot. Alright, so it's hello, internet, uh, welcome to Food Theory, where brain food is always on the menu. I'm gonna pause it right here, <laughs> and, um. A damn put bleach in my eye sockets and in my ears. What is this, Chad? If debunking the food pyramid, dissecting Kool Aid Man's deep comic book lore, or strategizing how to win McDonald's Monopoly game sounds appetizing to you, then you, my friend, are a food theorist and should consider joining our community of theorists. Already millions million strong from across, across the game, game theory, theory and film theory channels. channels. Why doesn't you just Ever wonder how psychology might be able to get you a bigger Chipotle burrito or the dark secrets behind the history of cornflakes? Do you want to know? I actually know that one. The Colonel Sanders. I challenge? actually know the the dark lore behind cornflakes. There's dark lore. Well, how um, I get a bigger Chipotle burrito. <sighs> What's his name? Kellogg, Mr. Kellogg, the guy who created cornflakes. Yeah. He created it as a anti-masturbatory aid. Hmm? Yeah, he he created it to make people stop masturbating. Because he was yeah, because he was like so anti-masturbation. Really? And he actually, at that point in the in the world, like 1910s or something, everyone was jerking off. They were on each other. Yeah, on, yeah. No, um, in each other. Oh, that's it was it was interesting. Um, I was watching a video, I can't remember, it was a, have you heard of Adam Ruins Everything? Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those videos. Mm. Uh, and he was talking about how the, uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, because uh, circumcision back then was not a huge thing. It was only done as like a religious sort of mm -hmm. thing for like uh, Jewish people or right. it, it, only, only religious things. Uh, but... This guy Kellogg, he was like, "Well, if you masturbate, uh, if you, if you, you know, circumcise your dicks, mm -hmm. then it'll get you to stop masturbating." And we know, all know how that turned out. Yeah, wait, that didn't, that doesn't add up at all. No, it doesn't add up. Yeah. He fucking lied. Yeah, he lied. <laughs> Where did the foreskin go? Yeah, and, <laughs> but in then, the goddamn cornflakes. <laughs> That's but, the dark. No, but then and then and then <laughs> no and then you uh, no and box. then you uh, <coughs> no and then yeah and then he created cornflakes as a way to get people to stop masturbating. And I'm like, I don't understand. I know how the fuck that adds up at all. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm gonna look this up. Wait, Kellogg master. I'm gonna make him. Um, if anything, it promoted it because every child realized that breakfast was now ruined for them. And the only way they can fucking make themselves feel better is to goddamn jerk the cocks off. Yeah. 
Uh, from mentalfloss.com, cornflakes were a part of an anti-masturbization crusade. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the Western world worked itself up into a mass hissy fit over the idea of people touching themselves. Judeo-Christian tradition had already been damning masturbation as a misuse of sexuality for ages. The Victorian era prudishness and the Great Awakening and other religious revivals in America created a perfect storm for people to really get obsessed with it. Books like the anonymously authored Anoinia, or The Heinous Sin of Self-Pollution, and all of its frightful consequences, and Samuel Tissett's tra uh, treatise on the diseases produced by on uh, onanim onanism? onanism, which is uh, another word for masturbation, oh. uh, laid the groundwork for medicalizing the solitary vice. Soon, masturbation was no longer just a moral failing, but also a physical and mental ailment that requires treatment and cures. Kellogg's Cures, yeah. In the young United States, one of the loudest anti-masturbization voices was a Michigan physician named John Harvey Kellogg. Yeah, John Kellogg was his name. Mm. The good doctor, yeah, he was a doctor. Oh. That's why, yeah. The good doctor was a bit uncomfortable about sex, thinking it detrimental to physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. He obviously had never touched any part of a woman before. <laughs> Ever. He's like, I only masturbate with... Uh, the poor quivering vaginas of my victims. So Excuse me, John? So, John, you... <clears throat> sorry, was that a... Are you raping these poor women? Well, no, no, no. no. Oh, no. No, of course not. Why would I? Just not asking. That sounds like you're... Never mind, John. You want a bowl of cereal? No, John. You, <laughs> you want a bowl of cornflakes? You're, you're trying to get your rapist ass out of prison. Uh, he never abstained from it and never consummated his marriage and may have actually spent his honeymoon working on one of his anti-sex books. That's so sad. Because his wife is like, all right, John, like, we're married. Do you want to... No. No. I no sex. I no wonder sex. if he was just super bitter because he couldn't get it up. Maybe he had no He's, penis. So he wrote a book about... Maybe yeah. he was born with no penis. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he was just like... He had nothing. He was the was first penisless skin. man, yeah. Yeah, it was just skin. Yeah. <laughs> He had no <laughs> Where genitals penis whatsoever. Could be. Yeah, no vagina. Yeah, no, yeah. Just pee came out of a skin flap. Just yeah, he just sweated out urine. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is what it was. He had skin. It was just completely flat, and then he had one cornflake-shaped hole, <laughs> right where a penis should be, and out came cornflakes instead of ah, beautiful. Penis. Yes. Yeah. And so he, then he and his wife. Everybody. Okay, here we go. We're gonna keep going. He and his wife kept separate bedrooms and adopted all of their children. God, sex with your wife was bad, but masturbation was even worse. Quote, if illicit commerce of the sexes is a heinous sin, Kellogg wrote, self-pollution is a crime for doubt, um, doubly abominable, a uh, uh, close quote. In plain facts for old and young, embracing the natural history and hygiene of organic life, Kellogg cataloged 39 different symptoms of a person plagued by masturbation, including general infirmity, Defective development, mood swings, fickleness, bashfulness, boldness, bad posture, stiff joints, fondness for spicy foods, acne, palpitations, and epilepsy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you have any of those things, then you fucking masturbate. <laughs> you have epilepsy? You turkey <laughs> off, motherfucker. <laughs> Is that a pimple I see? You fucking you, whore? Yeah, you. <laughs> Stop jerking yeah. your cock off. Kellogg's solution to all of the suffering was a healthy diet. He thought that meat and certain flavorful or seasoned foods increased sexual desire, and that planter food, especially cereals and nuts, could curb it. While working at the superintendent at a Michigan Battle Creek sanitarium, he hit upon a few different healthy eating ideas. Two became, bre <laughs> two became breakfast staples, and one thankfully didn't. Uh, early in the, his tenure at the sanitarium, Kellogg created a health treat for patients that consisted of oatmeal and cornmeal based into biscuits and then ground into tiny pieces. He called it granula. This was maybe the worst name imaginable, since a very similar product with the exact same name was already made and sold by James Caleb Jackson, another dietary reformer. Under the threat of the lawsuit, Kellogg changed the name of his creation to, gran to granola. Another Kellogg dietary innovations developed to ensure clean intestines was an enema machine that ran water through the bowel and then followed it with a pint of yogurt, half delivered through the mouth uh, and another half through the anus. This one did not really catch on. <laughs> Jesus, I wonder why. 
Later, Kellogg developed a few different uh, flicked grain, grain breakfast cereals, uh, including cornflakes, as healthy, ready-to-eat, anti-masturbatory breakfast meals. He partnered with his brother Will, the sanitarium's bookkeeper, to make and sell them to the public. Will had less interest in the dietary purity and more business sense than his brother, and worried that the products wouldn't sell as they were. He wanted to add sugar to the flakes to make them more palatable, but John wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> Should we add, you know, make this a little more... No, people gotta stop jerking off! Yeah, people gotta stop jerking off! <laughs> What's this fucker's name? Uh, John Harvey Kellogg. Well, John Harvey, our favorite video site will... Oh, God! What are you looking up? <laughs> ...will say otherwise that uh, your goddamn genius idea has promoted the videos titled Eating Cereal Out of Ass and Anal Sex. <laughs> Good job, John. <laughs> This one's just cornflakes, question mark? And that's a brutal <laughs> thumbnail, for fuck's sake. Do not look these up, people. <laughs> Eating cornflakes type beat. Fun with cornflakes. This is a naked man <laughs> dancing on your, on your fucking mas- anti-masturbation cereal, you dumb fucker. <laughs> and there's multiple videos called Fun with Cornflakes, and it's, and it's the same fool. He is literally just playing with a dildo in cornflakes. <laughs> But don't worry, John, I'm sure this man doesn't jerk off, nor do any of these four people. <laughs> oh my god. Job well done there, John. Yeah, Job well done. God. I'm sure he'll be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Will had less interest in the... Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, Will eventually started selling the cereals through his own business, which became the Kellogg Company. The brothers continued to feud for decades after. Masturbators who enjoy cornflakes can probably attest that k- sugar was a good idea, since Kellogg's cereal doesn't really have it. It's intended effect. <laughs> since Kellogg's cereal is, um, how do we say this in one word? Uh, dog shit. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, there's only two reasons why you'd be eating cornflakes. One, you're fucking two. Or two, two you're, you're trying smoking. to upload a Pornhub video. Yeah, you're <laughs> uploading a Pornhub video. Or three, you're smoking some weed and you are really, really hungry. Oh, man. While cereals and yogurt enemas might have kept most people in line, Kellogg also supported more extreme measures. Uh, stuff that would get your medical license revoked today and lead to many, many lawsuits. For people with particularly nasty masturbation habits, for boys, he suggested threading silver wire through the foreskin to prevent erections and cause irritation. For girls, he advocated, and sometimes employed, an application of carbolic acid to the clitoris to burn it and discourage touching it. Dear God, John, what the fuck were you doing? Making Pornhub money, I guess. I mean, clearly. That was a disturbing thumbnail. I cannot unsee that. <laughs> it was literally... <laughs> this poor woman's asshole was held open by, like, one of those metal things. And oh, there was God. cereal in there with someone pouring milk. <laughs> and they were about to eat it. I was like, God! I didn't want to see that. That one was literally cornflakes, question mark? <laughs> And get this is the best part. They were goddamn Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> it was Fruit Loops in her asshole. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Cornflakes? Question mark. Uh, no. no, Fruit Loops. <laughs> It's not, it's not cornflakes. No, obviously not. Oh. They were made to be anti-masturbation, you fucking idiots. Oh, God. Oh, my. No, yeah, but <laughs> John Harvey Kellogg was also against, uh, yeah, he, again, circumcision was not a huge thing. Yeah. And it's become a huge thing now because they're just like, well, I'm circumcised, so I'm going to have my son be circumcised. Yeah. It's it's just now a thing, but like back in the 1900s, he, they were just like, well, I want him to get him to stop touching his penis. And yeah. So they they cut that shit off. You're not nervous, are you? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And eat cornflakes. Yeah. yeah. And eat, oh, and eat, eat cornflakes. Eat my product. <laughs> cornflakes? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit Loops. <laughs> You fucking idiot. 
Oh, it was <laughs> beautiful. Oh, what God. Beautiful I'm moment. tempted to look at that, but I really don't want you, to. It's, it's, I wouldn't. I don't want to re-see it. it was, I don't want to look at it. It's a disturbing image. But, I mean, you might Kaden as well. just looked at me as if he wanted to look it up. You don't. He, like, he, like, did, he did, if like, you a take. Get, if you get sick, if you uh, get grossed out from, like, the sort of stuff you were looking at... Oh, you that's will true. Not handle during our Kingdom well. Hearts I, 2 look, playthrough, I've seen some pretty nah, you, you have not during, seen during, this bad. During uh, Kingdom Hearts, our Kingdom Hearts 2 playthrough, oh, yeah. Kaden looked up some pretty nasty he Kingdom was, Hearts shit. Yeah, Kaden has no restraint, and then claims. He's well, innocent. what what claim what baffles me yeah. is that without shame. We had we had like a mini segment during our Kingdom Hearts playthroughs. Like, yeah. let's have Kaden look up shit. And without shame or yeah, regret afterwards. Without regret afterwards. That's the full title. Yeah, yeah. and so he and fucking does, looks yeah. up shit with no shame or no regret. Yeah, and so he just look it up and just no shame, no regret. Just yeah. look up a fucking picture of Sora's dick. I guess, yeah. Sora and Riku just fucking in the ass. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Also, yeah. this this is very off topic, but I uh, another butter chicken article oh, that yeah. we found. This dude was imprisoned for life. This was a military vet. An African-American military vet was imprisoned for life for selling $30 of marijuana. Oh, $30? Yeah. It was 0. .69 grams of marijuana. And he was imprisoned for life, and he's finally being released. God, how old is he? Well, it was 2008. I don't know how old oh, he is now. Okay. They imprisoned him for life in 2008. Or they imprisoned him for, like, 15 years, and then in 2012, they made it life, which I don't know why. And then, now he's being released, because that's fucking absurdity. That's, that's absurd. But anyway, that's off the beat. Anyway, I mean, anybody, anybody that's, like, imprisoned for dumb bullshit like that. Yeah. I'm curious. I just realized, too, we never finished talking about, because a couple episodes ago, we did talk about, uh... Gone with the Wind, and how bullshit that movie is mm -hmm. to Kyle. I agree, it is. Uh, we never talked about Song of the South. Oh, yeah. Not much to say. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> movie. Yeah, it's a beautiful film. Uh, it's hot, actually, in hot my... Hot take, it's beautiful, it's and if it, anyone roasts it, I fucking hate them. In my opinion, I... I understand why it's banned. Yeah. I don't think it should be banned. No. It's an era, you know, it's like, uh... It's, it's, it's similar to, because it's the similar era to Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Like, the movie is similar era, like, time frame-wise, mm -hmm. like Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Gone with the Wind is still praised. Yeah. yeah. There is a section, though, of, of that movie that is very questionable, which Br'er Rabbit... Uh, oh, yeah. Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear try to capture Br'er Rabbit, and they make a tar baby. Yeah. <laughs> and Br'er Rabbit is hopping down the field, looks at the tar baby, and goes, How do you do? And then looks at it again, because it doesn't respond, because it's, you know, an in, in animate object. Yeah, yeah. He looks back at it, he's like, How do you do? Tries to walk back in, and he's like, Now listen to me, if you don't say how do you do to me, I'm gonna beat the tar out of you, you hear me? And yeah. I'm like, Uh, uh-uh, no, 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 this does not look good yeah, at all. At all. <laughs> I was just like, that, uh, yeah. That was like the only questionable part that I'm like, oh god, like... I, this is, uh, and see why Walt and the boys, uh... You brought animals? First timers, huh? Yeah, I got distracted by this full-blown... I mean, it's true. Yes. It's a Pokemon battle. But yeah, I don't know how Walt let that slide. I mean, I do I feel like it was he, commonly I mean, known that Walt say, was a racist. What? Never. <laughs> Never. Never. Oh, man. The man adored Jews. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, maybe not, maybe not that. But. <laughs> but it's it's definitely a shame, Walt. These don't look that hard. They're not. Dear God. You were beating the shit out of him. Oh, you killed the man. You are just slaughtering these dogs. You are dead. <gasps> it's the music! It's because I have a bat with nails. Da -da 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 so yeah, uh, I'm basically... I'll give you guys a little story summary while we have it. 
yeah. real time. So basically, when we saw Tifa in that little carriage, oh yeah, she was going to meet this guy named Don Corneo mm -hmm. to audition to be his next wife. Oh, and we're trying to save What's Tifa you? by getting Aerith an audition What's wrong? to be Don Corneo's wife. I think if okay. I had a million, and we need to make money to get that. If I had all the money in the world, I'd be buying this. <laughs> this costume on the right. <laughs> and if I had the extra cash, I would do the one on the left. <laughs> Could you please put that to the drive? Yes. <laughs> That's what they call the, the characters in Song of the South are beautiful, by the way. They're just hilarious. I, hilarious. I, I just love... Yeah, you can't say that they're... Well, I don't know. Would you say that they're stereotypes? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. No, probably. It's... I mean, because they're... I don't know they, enough. Well, because that, yeah, that's the thing. I don't want to be ignorant and say... Yeah. Yeah. Because James Baskett, the guy who plays Uncle Remus, he does play Br'er Fox and Br'er Rabbit. Right. Like, he does play both of those characters. Yeah. But it it is pretty like heavily stereotyped the whole yeah. the whole thing. I mean like what I assume to be just my ignorant instinct is that I want to be like those characters are funny and he does a good job voice acting them. Yeah. He does a good job in the whole film. But also I don't want to be like oh there's nothing wrong with anything that's happening because maybe there is. I just enjoy his voice acting. It's funny. Yeah. But also, it's like, yeah, I mean, there's, it's considered racist for a reason. I wish I better understood it. Yeah. Um. Well, I know there's been, like, a couple of people uh, saying that, like, oh, you know, like, how come they're not releasing Song of the South onto yeah. Disney Plus or whatever? Uh, let me see. Uh, it's from ScreenCrush.com. Uh, let me see. No rules. Yeah, it's talking about Song of the South. What? It's Harold in the Purple Crayon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of does. Just how like bad him. is it? It's pretty bad. Granted, the film. Uh, granted, nothing in the film comes close to matching the virulent racism of a film like Birth of a Nation. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, silent about yeah, no shit. Yeah, <laughs> that has actual I mean, that black just, face in it. No, that one just praises the KKK. Yeah, Song of the South's African American characters are treated warmly, particularly Uncle Remus, who's Johnny's best friend and confidant, a charismatic storyteller, and most importantly, the film's conduit to the animated world of Br'er Rabbit. Basket was given an honorary Oscar for the role. He was. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't let him go and get it because they're fucking racist. Uh, they were. They actually, yeah. D they didn't let him in the fucking building, did yeah. they? Yeah. They they're didn't just let like, him James, you won the Oscar. Guess what? You're not going to get it, though. Yeah, they're going to be like, you can sit outside and we'll hand it to you when you're done. Uh, it's so stupid. Just scumbags. Yeah. The problem isn't necessarily what Song of the South depicts, but what it chooses not to depict. Oh, that's true, because it was. Oh. Uh... Uh... All the, yeah, because they were that. I, th I guess that is the problem with Song of the South is that they they made it seem like that after the Civil War the blacks had it easy. Oh, that they were just like best. Friends yeah, they were just like all happy go lucky and like Woo! They're just chilling next door. Yeah, they're just no, like, like struggles. With, yeah. Okay. Although Harry, uh, although Harris is the director, Uncle Remus' stories were never set in Georgia after the Civil War. The film adaptation never makes it clear when the story is taking place. Wikipedia tells me that if you're an expert in the Reconstruction era clothing, you'd recognize Johnny and his family's late Victorian wardrobe. But for the rest of us dopes, there's no indication of when the film is set. If you're not a scholar or an Uncle Remus expert, it's very easy to assume that the film is set before the Civil War, and that Remus and Uncle Tempe, Hattie McDaniel, are slaves, and that they are completely fine with that. No, it's set after the Civil War. Yeah. It's set during the Reconstruction era. Yeah, I could have sworn. Uh, no one expects a serious meditation on racial identity in the Disney's children's film. At least they, let's see. So, they talk about Zootopia for a little bit. Uh, 
Yeah, the words slave and slavery are never uttered, and the specifics of the economic relationship between the blacks and the whites, master and slave, employer and servant, are left deliberately vague. By stripping out any concrete details of time and place, Disney essentially turns the plantation system into a ludicrous utopia where blacks and whites live in harmony. A harmony where the only thing that's clear is that the blacks are inferior and servile to the whites, but are content to work the fields anyway. Yeah, I, I get that. It's a good case against them. Yeah. Um, it talks about Br'er Rabbit. Uh, several of Remus' stories are about Br'er Rabbit wanting to run away from his problems. The moral, inevitably, is that you can't avoid trouble and there's no place like home. These lessons are particularly important to Johnny because he doesn't like life on the plantation, initially, and wants to run away with his father in Atlanta. But when coupled with the African-American characters' oddly cheerful attitude about their social status, the movie seems to be arguing on behalf of complacency. Don't leave the plantation. Don't try to better yourself. Just go with the flow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, think about I, it like that. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense, though, in the context of the movie now, now that I'm thinking back to, like, certain segments of the movie. I'm thinking about, like, oh, yeah, like, there is a couple of sections where you're, like, it's during the Reconstruction era, and they're trying to treat it like, oh, nothing's bad, nothing bad is going on. Yeah. We just, we didn't just lose a war. Right. And, you know, black people are not being treated any differently, you know, it's, it's... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that inter that's interesting. Um, oh, God, come on. <laughs> what am I looking at, though? Oh, yeah. fuck. Honeycombs. Mm. Basically, there's a hotel in this town Next that has up, a bunch of prostitutes dressed up as yeah. honeybees. Hell yeah. I yeah. Thought you'd be happy. No, I thought it was pretty cool. Just thinking about Is it like based off of... Next? I'm just curious if it's like based you know, off of a thing we've made it this that far. exists. I'm sure we can handle like anything they Earth. throw at us. Yeah, that's what I, that was my actually my first question. Yeah. I'm going to look that up really quick. Yeah, like if I can... Do girls and just dress up as honeybees? <laughs> <laughs> and the SWAT team come wanted. to the window. <laughs> there are wanted signs of me now. Oh great, now I'm higher on the FBI wanted list than D.B. Cooper. So is this ugly bat better than your swords then? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Really? It's a shame, but... No, it, it, looks looks like, it looks like you're the, you know, mm. slightly bigger kid in the fourth I mean, grade class. check it. <laughs> like, you can get away with just a little bit more than everyone else. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it is. Nail bat? Nail bat. What's yeah. SP? Magic. But that is oh, wait, no, 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 no. SP, no, no, no. SP is not magic. SP is ability points. So basically I can, with every weapon in the game, I can go into upgrade weapons and use the SP and upgrade the weapon. Well, Iron Blade has a lot more. It does, but I don't want to upgrade Iron Blade. Okay. So, yeah. I want to upgrade Nail Bat. What? Because Nail Bat is better. Man, there was a film in 2006 know. called it's The Adventures the of Bats. Br'er Rabbit. The, the fuck? Whoa. In 2006? 2006? They're reawakening this, uh... About a lot of money this, uh... Sketchy <laughs> cement. Oh, I know. Oh, oh there it is. Movie. Ladies and gentlemen, our time together is almost over. Tonight's brilliant for Nail yeah, that's a, that's a bit dicey. Who made it? <laughs> Pixar. Uh, Microsoft. <laughs> really? I uh, know. Let me see. Ladies and gentlemen, all good things must come to an end. I, what is it with everybody in this world wearing sunglasses? And it does. And it does. Every single time. Every done single, it. every single person who wears sunglasses in this game. Yeah. The power couple with the boundless love for bloodshed. Bloodshed. Champions of Madam M, Cloud, and Aaron. So, real quick before we sign off for this episode, um, my sister was doing some research because there's this debate of like um, whether it's Eris or Aerith. You you know about that debate, right? Why would it be Eris? Because in the original Final Fantasy VII game, in P the PS1, yeah. there's a typo that says Eris. A-E-R-I-S. Eris. Right. But, um... It's yeah, it's a typo. Right. But people have, since then, called her Aerith. 
because that's what her actual name is. Like, it says it in, like, cutscenes, it says it in the game. They pronounce it Aerith. Right. Yeah, but because of one typo, everyone's just like, oh, no, it's Aeris. <laughs> yeah, it's just one typo. I mean, I don't know the details. That's like being in an... Uh, air. It's, it's like being in an anti-vaxxer. You're believing one shred of evidence that might say otherwise, and yeah. then there's eons worth of evidence that says absolutely goddamn not. It's the same thing. Uh, it's the exact, same thing. Thing. It's exact same argument. These Aerith yeah, fools. Aerith, Aerith is the official version, but Aerith was used in the North American PS1 game. And that spelling carried over to other Western ports, such as the Nintendo Switch port. However, the Final Fantasy VII remake is going with the official Aerith. Yeah, because it's Aerith. Yeah, because yeah. The vaccines are real. <laughs> <laughs> her real her name is Aerith. Uh, in the original Japanese version, but it was translated as Eris by uh, the English version. That's because the Japanese language doesn't have the TH noise of the English language. Instead has the SU noise closely s close to the English S noise, leading to the mistake. That Nick Cannon is in this movie, as is Danny Glover and Wayne Brady. Oh, no. Wayne, Bra what? Wayne, what are you doing? What are you in, doing uh, to your career, the Wayne? The Adventures of Br'er Rabbit. Are you talking about Wayne? What about Nick Cannon? His career is that finished. Wanda sure. Sykes? Oh, no. Nick Nick Cannon's career is over. Wanda yeah. Sykes' is, is it? Ever since he tried to diss him. Well, ever since he was revealed to be a black supremacist, right? Well, that I didn't pay attention. But I did mention, I did pay attention to what he tried to diss him and him, and he fucking fell on his face. Well, next time on Butter Chicken. <laughs> Wanda Sykes, guys. Gary Anthony. We'll Williams. talk about something else. See ya. Bye. Hugs and kisses, holding hands when nights are long. And in the fall.